Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Albert Gallatin's Gymnasium for tonight's game between the Albert Gallatin Colonials and the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. I am Rob Flokovich, alongside Jared Tolbert. Hello. Jared giving, his, uh, giving it a try tonight, his first uh, basketball game, so we'll take it a little easy on him. He'll do uh, fine with us here. But uh, here to look at two teams, crosstown rivals, big rivalry uh, for a long time now, Albert Gallatin and Laurel Highlands, as we get ready for uh, game time, about a minute left on the clock. Jared, I think you have uh, the overall records for both teams, if you want to go ahead and elaborate on those for uh, everybody listening. Oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, Laurel Highlands Mustangs, their overall record is 8-4. and four. They are 4-2 and two at home, and they're also 4-2 and two away. Uh, their current conference record is 3-2 and two with wins over McKeesport, Woodland Hills, and Greensburg-Salem. And their two losses are against Gateway and Penn Hills. And we're, we're going to hold off on that note real quick, Jared, not to interrupt it's you. Okay. But uh, we're going to take a pause here for the national anthem. We will get right back to it in just a second. All right, Jared, now that the National Anthem has taken place, we will wait to see who the starters are for both teams. If you would like to continue to elaborate on those records. Uh, yes, uh, Albert Gallatin is currently 5-7 and seven overall. They're 5-3 and three away, but surprisingly they have no wins at home. They're own four at home, but they are 3-2 and two in their conference with wins over Greensburg, Salem, Woodland Hills, and Gateway, and losses against... Penn Hills and McKeesport. Well, I'll tell you, Jerry, this would be a heck of a win for Albert Gallatin, the first win at home at least. Yes. For uh, the Colonials. Yeah. Not that they have uh, been uh, too short on the losing side this season. Uh, coming off a uh, playoff appearance for the first time in a long time, I think. Yeah. But, uh, you know, anything to build up a little bit of momentum while. You know, you're in the regular season, and it can't, uh, can't hurt. Yeah, and I'm telling you what, Nate, Nate English, since, because we're in the same grade, we're both freshmen since my freshman year. Oh, excellent. Shea Fleener took over as coach. Two years in a row they went, and hopefully oh, this excellent. year it's another excellent. birth. Yes, yes. Uh, Shea Fleener, a uh, heck of a coach. He really turned this program around. He uh, actually took over uh, – my first, uh, I was actually a player his first season here. Wow. Um, so I know um, what his, you know, what his foundation is like, what his groundwork is like, and it's been successful so far. Yes. As the starters were just announced for both teams, Albert Gallatin is going to go with Nate English, a junior guard, Dom Llewellyn, a senior guard, Tito Harrison, a junior guard, Dylan Shea, a junior forward, and Braxton Turner, a senior forward. Laurel Highlands, who's already out at half court, ready to tip the ball off, is going to go with Keandre Cook, a senior forward, Rodney Gallagher, who is going to be one to watch this evening, a freshman guard, Caleb Palumbo, who is a junior guard, Tyvon Long, who is a senior center, and Tim Smith, who is a senior guard. Yep, going back to the main vocal point, Rodney Gallagher, a lot, a lot of the talk around the school right now 
Uh, most people know him for playing under LeBron's son, Bronny James. Oh, absolutely. Over in Ohio for the Blue Chips. He oh. is a phenomenal player. Actually, uh, he does average right now. He's averaging about 22 points a game. Yeah, he is going to be something to watch as, how, as Laurel Highlands takes control of the opening tip. Gallagher is already moving around Tim Smith. Has the ball at the top of the key, passes back over to Cook. Cook takes a quick three, and he hits Beautiful it from shot. the start. That's going to be a quick start for the Mustangs as now Albert Gallatin has their opportunity to see what they can put up, match up. Oh, nice that steal. opening score. Steal by Cook, very quick down the floor. Layup, good for the Mustangs. Caleb Palumbo is going to come away with the two-point layup after the steal. Pretty much the smallest guy in the lineup, but don't don't under, don't underestimate him. I watch his highlights. Very good three-point shooter. As absolutely, well. absolutely. As Albert Gallatin is going to take their first shot of the ball game, we have Dylan Shea coming around with a two-point jump shot. Laurel Highland's going to give it another go. They have a strong start, five to two already. Palumbo's there it is going to. Take oh. a three-pointer, and he's going to miss it. Not Tim Smith rebound. with the rebound. Mustangs still control the ball. He's pinned deep in the one corner. Mustangs still have the ball after a little bit of Ooh. tussling around. Well, Long, the six-foot-four center, lays it up. Defense got a little lazy there for the Colonials. Left an open man open underneath, yeah, and absolutely. that's what happens. Yeah, that just comes off of the rebound wide open in the paint. Absolutely. We're going to have a three-point shot for mm. Albert Gallatin. Llewellyn's going to miss, and that is going to be Long doing work on both ends of the floor. He's already has a bucket and a rebound. Rodney Gallagher this with the true. ball at the top of the key. Over to Tim Smith. Back to Gallagher. Gallagher looks at what he's got. Long's going to come up and try to set a pick for him. He's going to roll over to his left side, take oh, a man. jump shot at the free throw line, and he is going to miss that. Rebound controlled by, Hunt, really by nice Nate contest. English of the Colonials. English is going to take a long jumper. He's going to miss that. And the rebound's going to be controlled by Tim Smith. Tim Smith coming down the floor for the Mustangs. He's going to take a jumper. And after rattling around the rim, that shot is good. The Mustangs off to a quick start. I'm sure uh, that's what Coach Hogger wants. And that is what he's getting right now as English tries to set something up for the Colonials. Yes, absolutely. That's that's really one of the main points I was looking at, it stopping Gallagher and coming up with the screens and everything because 15 long, six foot four, 183 pounds. Oh, yes. Got, got quite a good offense here. And Gallagher's going to put a shot up after the Dylan Shea block. He's going to miss the second shot of the evening. Nate English brings the ball back up the floor for the Colonials. He's in the middle of the key. And now the Mustangs have been caught sleeping. And Dylan Shea will put up his second bucket of the evening. Speaking of Shea, he's actually averaging the most points on the team right now. He's Is he really? About well, 18. 18 points. We'll see what happens. He's off to a hot start here. Tim Smith takes a jumper for the Mustangs. That shot is off. Braxton Turner with the rebound. English bringing the ball back up the floor. He tosses it back to Turner. A little bit of a miscommunication. Ball ends up down wow. in the corner, and they're going to go Dylan Shea for a travel. That's going to be a big turnover for the Colonials here early, seeing as that uh, Laurel Highlands is off to the start that they are. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, a fast start, up by five points already. 4.46 really to that. go in the first quarter. 9-4 to four lead for the Mustangs in the Crosstown rivalry. Tim Smith brings the ball down the floor for Laurel Highlands. He's looking at what he's got. He passes it over to Cook. Cook back to Palumbo. Palumbo to Smith. Smith is going to look around. He's going to drop it back to Palumbo, who's back to Smith. These guys like to share the ball. Taking his good old time. Waiting for something to set up. These players are a little stagnant, but uh, yeah. not that that's a poor thing as Tim Smith ends up with the ball on the right side. He's going to drop it down low. Long puts up a shot. He's going to miss it. Nate English attempts to save the ah. ball for Albert Gallatin, but it looks like it's going to be out of bounds on English. Good hustle play, just not there quite fast enough. Yep. Re really good double team, too, on Long. Oh, absolutely. Miss that. Even though it went out of bounds, it was still worth it. Gallagher's going to inbound for the Mustangs. Gallagher over to Tim Smith. Tim Smith's going to pass it to Cook. All about taking their time now that they have established oh. a bit of a lead as Cook has his, the ball as his uh, pocket picked ah. by Nate English. Oh. They bring the ball up the floor to the Albert Gallatin side. Scrum in the middle down low, and it's going to end up being out of bounds. It looks like it's going to be out of bounds on Rod Gallagher. Yeah. So, or so Albert Gallatin will keep possession here. Every possession counts, especially yeah, when you're looking need. at uh, 
Rodney Gallagher. Nate English for three off the inbound. That's going to be missed. And controlled by Tim Smith of the Mustangs. Back to Palumbo. Palumbo takes a three and there he it nails it. Yep, don't, never underestimate that kid. Five, he's about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, 135 pounds. Doesn't look like nothing, but he's a really good three-point shooter. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a sharp shooter. He's showing that quick as Albert Gallatin tries to answer again. Down to Shade. Shade trying to make a move. He puts a ball up. That's going to be missed. Two men from the Colonials go up for the rebound at the same time. Neither of them get it. Rod Gallagher down low to Cook, and that is going to be good for the Mustangs. The Mustangs have come out on fire. They look to keep control of that winning record and keep control of this rivalry. So for those of you that may not know, um, Jared uh, brushed on it a little bit uh, in the beginning. We, we talked about Rod Gallagher for a quick moment now that we have a little bit of a timeout by the Colonials. 14-4 lead for the Mustangs with 321 in the first quarter. Rodney Gallagher has been, as you say, um, he's played for the Blue Chips in Northeast Ohio. He yep. has been a phenom, one that we haven't seen in this area for quite a long time. Really, absolutely. I know he has been with uh, the varsity team for a while now. He is a 14-year-old freshman <laughs> with scholarship offers yeah. to Pitt, West Virginia, Ohio State, Rhode Island, Illinois, Xavier, and Belmont. So this kid wow. is the real deal. He's going to be fun to watch this evening. Yep, absolutely. Albert Gallatin's going to control the ball out of the timeout. Passes it back to the top of the key to English. English over to Turner. Turner jump shot. Going to be a miss. However, Turner is fouled in the act of shooting. He will go to the line. We have our first free throws of the evening. Foul's actually going to be on Gallagher. Huh. Everything they need right here. Turner's going to put the first one go. up, and he nails it. Shot. <laughs> Hopefully this is a nice little boost for the Colonials. Need every possession and every score they can get whenever Laurel Highlands is coming out this high power. Second shot for Turner is up and good. Two for two from the line. That's a nice little uh, morale booster, especially after the timeout. See if the Colonials can get something fired up as Palumbo dumps it down low to Long. Long. Trying to make some moves, Ooh, and he nails it. That was an excellent, excellent post move by Long as he comes away with another basket as English brings it down the floor for Albert Gallatin. Going to pass it around the arc, look for something to build off of. Shea's going to try to do a little post move of his own, but he's going to get caught for traveling. Yep. There goes the fans. Didn't oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. As uh, always. Laurel Highlands and Albert Gallatin both with excellent showings here. This gym is pretty packed. Yep. Close proximity between the two schools. If we oh, yeah. as, an, as we have an injured player, he's down. It's an injured Mustang. It looks like it's going to be Tyvon Long, yeah. the six foot four center. Wow. He started out with an excellent game. Looks like he's grabbing yeah. that lower left leg. Yeah, it looks like it. And try to Ooh, get up like under that. his own power. We definitely yeah. want to see him walk off the floor. Hopefully it's just a bit of a twisted ankle, something minor. Yeah. He's going to walk around pretty gingerly. We hope he is okay. <coughs> he's going to walk off. Of, he's going to walk off the floor, limping just a little bit, but always a, always uh, positive to see them walk off of the floor. Yeah. Under their own power, I should say. Yeah, absolutely, especially a player like that, a re really key player. Oh, absolutely. He had a lot to do with uh, Laurel Highland's early run here. Replacing Long is going to be number 20, 21, excuse me, Nick, Nick Egnott, a six foot three junior. As Laurel Highland tries to keep pace with what they've been doing, Tim Smith with the ball at the top of the key. Over to Egnott, early ball action. Cook is going to take a jumper from the right, from the left side. He's going to miss it. Dylan Shea controls the rebound for the Colonials. Sex, or, uh, English brings the ball back up the floor to the right side. Passes it to Mason Lehu. Lehu to Hunter Sexton. Sexton back to English. Got some new faces in for Albert Gallatin after that last time out as Dylan Shea looks to drive. He dumps it off late. 
Turner's going to try to put up a shot. He is at, oh, they're going to call a jump ball. That's an interesting call yeah, okay. by the referee. Dylan yeah. Shea goes up to put up a layup right underneath the Albert Gallatin basket, and he gets tied up with uh, Cook down there from the Mustangs, and uh, referees call a jump ball. So the possession will remain with Albert Gallatin. We're going to inbound to Turner. Turner right over to English on the three-point line, puts up a shot, misses it. Turner with a clean rebound, rebound, puts it back up, and is fouled by Egnott. Turner going back to the line for the Colonials for free throws number three and four. Yeah, like you were saying about them rotating a, a lot of guys, that, that is pretty convenient this year because last year they, they, def, they definitely didn't have enough guys for that. But now you, you see down at the bench, there's, there's oh, a yes, ton of guys yes. that are ready to play. I mean, we got five on the floor is – Turner hits his first free throw and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the bench. So 12 guys is pretty uh, pretty solid. Yeah. There we go. Turner's going to hit his second. Laurel Highlands will take back over with possession. Tim Smith bringing the ball back up the floor for the Mustangs. Very active this evening in controlling the floor. He's going to dump it down to Cook. Cook over to Gallagher, who's trying to cut up the left side. Loses control a little bit. Back over to Cook. Back over to Smith. Smith to Cook. Cook is going to drive in. Layup oh, is good. Man. Pushing the score to a 10-point lead. The Mustangs over the Colonials, 18 to 8, with about a minute left in the first quarter. English has the ball at the top of the key for Albert yeah. Gallatin. Throws oh. a bit of an errant pass, which is broken up, but then controlled by Turner, who has an easy jump shot for the Colonials. Brings it back down to eight. New face bringing it down the floor. Rodney Gallagher. For the Mustangs, he's going to cut over to his left. He's going to drive all the way in and dump it off to Tim Smith at the last moment. Tim Smith's going to put up a three. He's going to miss. Cook is going to control the rebound. Cook's layup is good underneath the basket. Albert Gallatin's defense does not have an answer at the moment. Yeah, Cook has definitely really been taking over for long in a, in a really good way. He's, he's definitely been getting into the paint and still scoring. Absolutely. Right. He is filling the void very well as Turner is going to hit a jump shot for the Colonials as we approach 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Rodney Gallagher with the ball. He can be deadly if he gets the last shot of the quarter. Gallagher oh, makes him work at the top of the key. He, breaks oh, he wants it. He breaks some ankles. He puts up a shot. Uh, and he is missed. He misses the shot. Looked After like he, he takes heavy there. contact, he did want a foul there. Yeah. There was contact, but apparently not enough to warrant the foul. <laughs> but after one quarter at Albert Gallatin, at the Albert Gallatin Gymnasium, the Mustangs hold a 20 to 12 lead over the Colonials as we get ready for the second quarter. Not a whole lot, not quite what I expected out of Rodney Gallagher. I think the weight was kind of carried by Cook and Long prior right. to his injury. Uh, we'll have to see how the Mustangs adapt to Long, and we'll have to see in the second quarter here as we take a little bit of a break. Shay Fleener coaching up the Colonials. We'll have to see what their answer is. Yes, I, absolutely. Because even the even the couple shots that Rodney did make, there were it seemed like it was pretty good contest. I feel like Nate English is, is bodies really are the there. Game bodies are definitely there. Yeah. They just can't seem to uh, pull the trigger on stopping any shots. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, Cook and. Um, Cook is having no problem for, Must for the Mustangs driving. Tim Smith's having no problem controlling the ball. Colonial defenders are there. They're just playing yep. a little too soft for what we want to see. Yep. As we get ready to go here for the second quarter, the Mustangs will have possession. Palumbo is going to go ahead and inbound to Tim Smith. Tim Smith is going to run the floor once again, bringing the ball down into Mustang territory. He's going to dump it over to Gallagher on the left side. Gallagher's going to bring it back to the top of the key over to Cook. Cook is going to take another drive as Albert Gallatin Looking for the tries charge. to get a charge, and Shea Fleener yeah. is in sense as it is a defensive foul. He does not pull it off. Yeah. The referee saw a little too much movement apparently in the feet, which means Cook will go to the line for the Mustangs. There it is again, trying to drive to the paint just like his center. And Absolutely. He got it. Absolutely. His Cook's first free throw is up, and it is good despite the loud noise. We have pretty solid noise uh, for either side. We have the whole uh, you know, the side of the gym that we are on. The whole left side is all Albert Gallatin as Cook hits the second shot. And the whole right side appears to be uh, Laurel Highlands fans. 
This is, I'll tell you, the most filled up that I have seen this gym in a very long time. Yeah, yeah, student sections are As English up takes the a top. jumper for Albert Allerton, misses, controlled by Cook. Cook down to Palumbo. Oh. Palumbo's going to drive in after the behind the back. Dribble, dumps it over to Smith, and Smith is going to hit a wide open jumper. And Laurel Highlands has total control over this game. The Colonial defense does not have an answer at the moment. As they try to answer, try to they are going to miss the three-pointer, controlled by Cook. Cook is going to control the ball at the top of the key. Pass over to Tim Smith on his left on his right side. We have pretty tight man-to-man -man defense by the Colonials. Like we said, we just haven't seen them uh, take control at the moment as Rod Gallagher figures out what he wants to do for the Mustangs. He's going to drive over, have a heck of a move, put a shot up. He's going to make it. However, there was a whistle. Looks like it's going to be a foul on the floor. Yeah. So no shots coming. Shot does not count. But the Mustangs will control the basketball. Rod Gallagher is going to inbound the ball to Palumbo. Palumbo is going to spot shot. up three. He's going to miss that one. Bruce. Gallagher in the right spot right. takes the rebound. He turns around, puts up a jump shot. Right back. Gallagher gets his own rebound, has a heck of a move, puts up a layup. He misses his shot. And English brings the ball back up the floor for the Colonials. We're going to have a drive in the middle. Yet another whistle. Going to definitely be a foul on the floor. A little reach-in foul against the Mustangs. 6.35 to go in the second quarter. 24-12 Mustang lead over the Colonials. Albert Gallatin's going to switch some players in and out. The Mustangs stay pretty consistent with their players as English is going to take the spot up three and miss. English is going to get his own rebound after a scrum, ah. but it will be turned over. Rodney Gallagher for the Mustangs takes control, dumps it over to Tim Smith. Tim Smith drives down the middle, dumps it off to Palumbo on the right side, and he's going to nail a three. Wow. Palumbo's been looking for that shot once again, and he finally gets it. Yeah, pretty pretty decent contest on that. He has a very nice stroke, though. Yeah. Oh, bats it down, too. Oh, Bats it down. He is all over the place on offense and defense. Albert Gallatin try to see what they want to do on offense. English is going to put up a three, and Albert Gallatin does answer as English hits a three. Oh, Highlands back down the floor. Smith controlling the ball. Eggnaut's gotten a lot of time in since Long's injury. He is sitting over on the end of the bench. Looks to be okay, but we'll see if we see him again. And Eggnaut might be carrying the load as uh, Smith puts up a jumper from the middle of the lane, and he makes that too. Laurel Highlands is controlling all areas of the offensive floor. English looks at what he has for Albert Gallatin as he brings it back up the floor for the Colonials. Got, has a man in motion. Going to pass it to Llewellyn. Back to English. English oh, to Shea. Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea takes a jumper from the elbow. Misses. Ball controlled by Cook of the Mustang. Cook behind the back pass to Tim Smith. Oh, back to Cook. Cook wow. hits a three. Wow. Now Cook has hit a three. Wow. He is really, he's really good on both both ends. He on is. Inside and outside. He has been coming. the absolute show this evening for either side. As Albert Gallatin is going to let an errant pass go out of bounds. Their luck it is deflected by a Mustang. So the Colonials will keep control of the ball. Wow, that was just really unexpected by Cook. Absolutely, he can do it all. Apparently, as Albert Gallatin inbounds the ball, English has been a busy man for the Colonials as he controls the ball once again. Going to dump it to Llewellyn, back to English. English is going to try to force a pass to Sexton, but it's going to go off of Tim Smith's foot. So once again, the Colonials will control the ball as the inbound goes to English. English tries to find a lane down the middle, dumps the ball off at the right time to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea up right underneath the basket. He's going to nail that shot. Tim Smith brings the ball back down the floor for the Mustangs. Smith over to Palumbo. Palumbo tries to make some moves in the corner. He's going to turn it over. Llewellyn they need taking it. control for the Colonials. He's going to man the floor over to English. There English to Llewellyn. Llewellyn three, and he's nice. going to hit a three. Llewellyn 4-3 as Albert Gallatin starts to chip back into that deficit. 32-20. Mustang lead with four minutes exactly to go in the second quarter. Rodney Gallagher over to Tim Smith. Tim Smith back to Gallagher. Gallagher back to Smith as they try to break a little bit of pressure by the Colonials. Smith is going to dump it off to Cook. Cook is going to get fouled by English. Wow. 
An errant tie up, but a foul just the same. As we get things reset here, Rod Gallagher is going to take the ball out for the Mustangs. Right in front of the Albert Gallatin student section. Can't be too easy to operate in front of there. But just the same, it looks like Laurel Highlands has their uh, own student section. Pretty packed over on the other side. Rodney Gallagher inbounds to Tim Smith. Tim Smith's going to bring it back from the backcourt. Back over to Rod Gallagher. Gallagher over to Cook. Cook underneath. the pass. Cook underneath right. to Thomas Brown, who's going to have the easy layup. Caught the Colonial sleeping once again. English brings it back up the floor for Albert Gallatin. Llewellyn's going to take another three, and he's wow. going to hit another one. Yeah, yeah. It, it did look like uh, Rodney was pointing at uh, 24 to, to get up on Nate English at times. Yeah, so yeah, definitely a lot of space like. between Llewellyn and the defender. I would say that uh, it was uh, a little bit of Laurel Highlands caught napping again as yeah. Thomas Brown's going to take another shot from the three-point line. This time he's going to miss. English is going to bring the ball back up the floor after the Sexton rebound for the Colonials. He backs up. He looks at what he has in the lane, dumps it to Dylan Shea again at the right time, and Dylan Shea's going to go up and put up a shot right under the net. I'll tell you what, Jared, if you can get Dylan Shea open underneath the basket there, keep driving, draw a defender off of him, dump it down at the right time, he's pretty unstoppable down there. That might be what the Colonials have to do to get back into this game as they have clawed back a little bit yeah. now at a single-digit lead. Laurel Highland Mustangs 34, Albert Gallatin Colonials 25, 257 left in the second quarter. Now we have been down as many as 14 points. I believe the deficit was at the oh, yeah. most, so... Not quite there, but Albert Gallatin now trying to get into a little bit of a groove. Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed like Rodney and his offense was pretty high running at first. Like you said, it was it was up yeah, to Rodney 14 Gallagher, points. Cook, Tim Smith all had a you lot of hands here. in you know coming out and putting a lot of points up on the board. But Albert Gallatin has found a little bit of an answer as the Colonials come out with full port. Per Full court pressure on yeah, Gallagher, who's over to Thomas Brown, who's over to Agnaud. Agnaud oh. to Tim Smith, who almost loses the ball. Oh, he and Albert Gelton in English is going to pick the ball loose. It's the call. Now let's see which way this ball is going here. It looks like yeah, it looks it's like going it's to the Colonials. Be, yeah. Looks like it's going to Colonials. The press worked a little later than anticipated, but the press by Shea Fleener worked, and Albert Gelton's going to take the ball back over with a nine-point deficit, try to claw back a little bit more. Llewellyn's going to dump it all the way back to English. English is going to start fresh from the top of the key, see what he has. Back to Llewellyn. Llewellyn's going to oh, fire for shot. another three. Oh, oh and close one. In and out for Llewellyn's three. It's going to be controlled by Cook. Cook to Smith. Gall Smith to Gallagher. Gallagher to Smith. And Smith's going to get called for a travel. Laurel Highlands is going to turn the ball over after the Colonial miss. And... I'll tell the you crowd's what. getting a little into it here as momentum might be shifting a little bit towards Albert Gallatin. Yeah, and I'm, I'm telling you what, once you get Dominic in that hot spot for shooting, he's really consistent. Really Absolutely. Consistent. Absolutely. We see that here tonight as English looking what he has over to Sexton. Sexton's going to try to pass the ball into Shea. Who's going to be fouled trying to pick up the tight pass? I think it might have been four. Tried to rip it away real quick. Not if that good. would be four, that would be Terrence Thomas Brown for the Mustangs with his foul. Llewellyn's going to inbound to the Colonials, who will keep possession after the foul. Sec or English at the top of the key, going to dribble over to the left side, back to Llewellyn. Llewellyn has the hot hand at the moment, but he's going to be locked up pretty tight by Thomas Brown. Back to English. English over to Sexton. Sexton over to... Uh, Tony Jackson? Efford. Or Tony Efford makes the okay. basket. Lohan's going to control the ball once again. Rod Gallagher down to Egnot. Egnot with a oh, double clear double travel. travel. Egnot with a very clear travel, and the refs aren't going to miss that one as Laurel Highlands has yet another turnover. Yeah, really costly. Tried to look up for a quick pass down court. And, and, the and that's going to be kind of the uh, what you're losing whenever you lose uh, senior, or a, uh, yeah, long. A, a higher up leader like Long. Die, got him again. Albert Gallatin now has traveled their own and turns the ball back over to Laurel Highlands. It looks like we have a battle between the student, student sections. sections now. Yeah. Things getting a little interesting. 
as it is a 34-27 Mustang lead. Colonials have brought it down even a little bit more with a minute 33 to go before the half. Palumbo back to Rod Gallagher. Rod Gallagher is going to bring it down the floor. Gallagher to Smith, Smith uh, to Cook, Cook to Gallagher. Oh Gallagher's going to take a spot up three, and he's going to miss that shot as Albert Gallatin tries to go for a rebound. But Cook comes in to crash it for the Mustangs. I cannot tell. It looks like Mustang. the Mustangs are going to keep possession. Yeah. Yeah, at first I thought Gallagher was going to give it to Balumba in the corner because he, he's been putting up a good bit of threes. Yeah, they definitely had options. Take it. They definitely oh. had options on the last plays. There's a Palumbo three that he's going to hit. Yep, speaking of him. Speaking of Palumbo. So Colonials now back down by 10 points. This English brings the ball up the floor. Going to find oh, Dylan Shea underneath, uh, and it's going to be a turnover. Cook is going to take control for Laurel Highlands. Cook down to Gallagher. Gallagher over to Cook. Cook down low to Jaden Pratt. Jaden Pratt's going to put up a shot. He's going to miss the rebound by Tony Efford of the Colonials. And we have a foul on the floor. 49 seconds until the half. 37-27 Mustang lead over the Colonials here at Albert Gallatin High School. Colonials getting set to take another possession down the court as English brings the ball up the floor as it's been inbounded by effort. English is going to dump it over to Llewellyn. Llewellyn back to English. English dumps it low to ah, effort, and okay. it's going to be a loose ball out of bounds, but the Colonials will keep possession. The last to touch it, according to the referee, was a Mustang. Llewellyn's the inbounder for Albert Gallatin. He passes ah. over to Effort, a little bit over his head. Yep. Going to be a turnover. <laughs> Palumbo flying down the floor for the Mustangs. Right Albert right Gallatin is going to get a successful charge. So it's going to be an offensive foul against Palumbo. Taking the hit was Tito Harrison, but it's now Albert Gallatin ball once again with 33 seconds before halftime. Still that 10-point deficit. Albert Gallatin wants to chip into it a little bit before the half. Yeah, definitely need to get something there to get it down to anything under double digits. Anything under double digits would be fantastic for the Colonials to keep that momentum that they just had a little bit ago, but has now shifted back to the Mustangs. Yep. Ah, another tipped one. Oh. Another tipped ball. English Palumbo. trying to recover. And it looks like Palumbo had control for yeah. a brief second, but the referee on the, uh, base, or on the sideline over there is going to say that he had a foot on the line, so it's going to stay with Albert Gallatin. 20 seconds to go in the half. English bringing the ball back up the floor. He's been a busy man for the Colonials. He's going to draw a ball over to his right side. Spot up three-point jumper, and he ah. nails it. And there's a single-digit deficit there, Jared. Let's see what happens. Mustangs have five seconds before the half. Over to Tim Smith. Over to Rod Gallagher. Rod Gallagher's looking for something. He's going to lay the ball up at the buzzer. Wow. Nails it at the wow. buzzer. That was a Rod Gallagher player. nails the shot at the buzzer. Wow. But with the three from Albert Gallatin, that does keep it under sing that does keep it to single digits for the half. Yeah. Your score from Albert Gallatin's gymnasium at the half is M Laurel Highlands Mustangs 39, the Albert Gallatin Colonials 30. We will be back in the third quarter to bring you the rest of the action. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <laughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fun. Welcome back to Albert Gallatin High School Gymnasium. Bringing you back to tonight's game for second half action. I am Rob Flokovich alongside Jared Tolbert. Hello. Jared, we're jumping back into a game where Laurel Highlands has been pretty dominant, posting a 39-30 lead over the home Colonials. Seen a lot of seen a lot of strengths from Laurel Highlands. Started to see a couple of strengths from the Colonials uh, late in the second quarter. We're going to see uh, Shea Fleener 
can build on the momentum that he had going into halftime, and Albert Gallatin can maybe chip away even more to this lead, or if Floral Highlands is going to go ahead and run away with this. Yeah, they were they were both definitely really good on on both ends of the ball. Like both defensive possessions, they were getting good contests, and then in the paint wise and three wise, they were doing pretty good. As you saw, Dominic Wellen started getting heated up. Yes, he did. And then yes, uh, he did. Uh, number five, uh, P Palumbo, Palumbo started for getting Laurel heated Highlands. up He's pretty had good. a hot hand. Yes. And we were talking about Ronnie Gallagher taking over this game. I mean, he had that really nice finger roll right at the end of the half. He did. He knew how to close out the half. So, yeah. As we've had a little bit of action here already in the third quarter, the score is 41 to 33, Laurel Highlands. As I have noticed, Tyvon Long back in for the Mustangs nurse after nursing that lower leg injury. Yeah. Eggnot back out as Braxton Turner is going to take a hard foul by Cook going up to the basket. Turner, no stranger to the free throw line this evening, going to go back for what I believe is his fifth and sixth free throws. Yeah, we really like Braxton Turner and Dylan Shane together because last year it was mainly just Dylan Shea playing the center role. And he's about maybe 6'2", 6'3", but now that they got Braxton Turner in there, he's he's about 6'4". And yeah, according to what I'm looking at, Braxton Turner is a 6'4", senior, and Dylan yeah. Shea is a 6'1", junior, so Turner yeah. does have a little bit of an advantage over him. But 6'1", and 6'4", at this level in this area in high school is a pretty solid down-low combo as Turner oh, yeah. hits his free throws. Tim Smith's going to bring the ball back up the floor for the Mustangs. He's going to cut to the right side. Colonial's playing pretty tight defense as he dumps it over to Cook. Cook's going to turn the ball over to Llewellyn. Effort down the floor for the Colonials. He's going to lay the ball up as he's fouled, and he's going to miss the shot just barely. But we will see another Colonial go to the line. As this time we see Tony Efford, a 5'10 junior guard. See what he can do from the free throw line. Albert Gallatin have some pretty decent success so far this evening. First one up, and it's going to bank off of the rim. See what we can do on the second shot here since he missed the basket. Effort's going to put up another one. That ball is up, ah. and that's going to clank off the front of the backboard. A little bit of tussle for the rebound. We're still going at it. Turner and Cook for the Mustangs. Ah, pretty close. Cook is e able to push it over to Palumbo, who will take control for the Mustangs, bring it by on the floor. Cook squares up for a three from Palumbo's assist. He's going to miss. Ball is controlled by English, who is going to take an easy foul from Cook. Now, I'm not too sure, Jared, but it's I know Cook – he might be getting into a little bit of foul trouble here. I know the yeah. last couple uh, Laurel Highlands uh, foul calls, not that this has been too dirty of a game. It's been pretty clean, but it's been Cook. So yeah. he needs to maintain because what he's doing for this Mustang offense has been phenomenal. He needs to maintain if they want to hang on to this nine-point lead that they have with about six minutes left in the third quarter, 43-34 Mustangs. Yep. We're going to have another turnover. Oh. Tim Smith is going to pass the ball over to Palumbo. Palumbo is going to have an easy wide open layup. Palumbo tries to pick a pocket again. Yay. Harrison's going to control that ball for the Colonials, bring it all the way down the floor, dump it over to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea's going to take the easy layup from the, from yeah. the left side. Yeah, and you were just talking about Cook. Now Cook and Long are both back in together. So, oh, absolutely. So it could be pretty lethal. It could be lethal. As Gallagher misses another shot, I believe the only two points that he has is what closed out the half, which yep. is a very quiet evening for him. Yeah, absolutely. As Albert Gallatin has control on their own side of the floor. Battle underneath for the ball. Referee's going to get both players to cleanly. Let go of the ball. It's going to be a jump ball and possession arrow to the Mustangs. Yeah, it was a close one. Maybe after Gallagher missed that one, he started to get heated up a little bit because he was really fighting for that one. Yeah, he absolutely was. Between him and Effort down low, that was that could have been a nasty battle, oh, yeah. but broken up quick enough to be a jump ball. We yeah. can keep on moving with the game as Laurel Hines brings the balls back up the floor. Long left open down low. Wow. As the Colonials press, but Long's going to turn it over. Sexton with the steal for Albert Gallatin. A little bit of a low pass to the bottom. Tried to save by Harrison. Harrison's going to try to pass it back out to Sexton, Sexton but it is going to be thrown out of bounds. Another turnover for Albert Gallatin. And then Laurel Highlands will have another chance to take advantage. 
as Palumbo spots up from his favorite shot over by the three. He's going to fake the shot, pass it over to Cook. Cook back to Tim Smith on the other side, getting a little errant with those passes, but Laurel Highland's able to control. Oh, he Tim wants to it now. Cook. Cook to Gallagher. Ooh. Gallagher's going to miss another wow. shot, and Albert Gallatin is going to take control with the rebound. English is going to have a spot up three of his own. He's going to miss it off the front of the rim. He's going to control his own rebound. He's going to put up a shot. He is going to make it. Tim Smith bringing the ball back down the floor for Laurel Highlands. He drops it over down low to a crossing Palumbo who gets the ball a little too late out of bounds. Now we have Laurel Highlands turnover going to Albert Gallatin. Albert Gallatin now has the score down to a seven-point deficit. It is 45-38 Mustangs with 442 left in the third quarter. Albert Gallatin trying to cut it down to five and maybe even four here. On this next possession, as English tries to bring the ball down the floor, he's going to be locked up. He's going to spot up fake. for a three, and he misses it. Dylan Shea, a little bit of a battle for the rebound. Dylan Shea, I believe, is the one who knocks it out of bounds for the Colonials. Nothing like back and forth because that is all this has been, Jared, as Cook brings the ball up the floor, tosses it over to Gallagher. Gallagher's going to take control. Colonials doing a little half-court pressure, meeting the man. In the middle of the floor, Gallagher to Smith, Smith to Gallagher, Gallagher back to Smith. English trying to pick Smith's pocket for the Mustangs, but that ball is going to go out of bounds and stay with Laurel Highlands. Going to have Cook inbounding, who may have played every minute for this entire game as he inbounds it to Smith. Smith's going to toss it over Gallagher. Gallagher back to Smith. Smith finds Cook at the top of the key. He's going to take a spot up jumper. He's going to miss it. Controls his own to. rebound. Missed the putback. Antonio Effort controls the ball for the Colonials. Dumps it over to English. English brings the ball up the floor. Tosses it over to Sexton. Sexton to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea drives. He ah. misses it. Effort with the offensive rebound. He's going to go up strong and he's going to miss that, but that is okay. He is headed to the line once again. Yeah, yeah, he's been to the line a lot. And who who fouled him that time? Was that was that Cook again? It might have been Cook. I tried to listen to the PA announcer. I didn't quite see. I was more focused on effort going back yeah. up, but he is not afraid to use his body. Oh, no. It looks like it was long according to the scoreboard oh, okay. with the foul now that he's back in. Yeah. The unfortunate part, however, is effort misses his first yep. as it remains a seven-point colonial deficit. Going for shot number two here, effort up, ball is up, and there he's going to make the second one. So the lead is now down to six. It was 14, 45-39 Mustangs, 350 left in the third quarter. Tim Smith trying to build on the lead. Albert Gallatin trying to come back. Palumbo's going to get it behind the arc. He's going to dribble in a little bit. He's going to spot up and shoot a jumper. He misses it, along with the rebound over to Gallagher. Gallagher dumps it down low to Cook, and Cook oh. is going to turn it over. Wow. Cook turns it over. The man that has been controlling the Laurel Highlands offense has given the ball back to the Colonials and Albert Gallatin building even a little bit more. Yeah, and you were just talking about him being in pretty much the whole game. You figure Long got hurt. He had to go out, so they, they still needed a guy to stay in, in the paint. And Absolutely. As an Albert Gallatin shot is put up and missed, and that is a questionable call. Wow. That is one questionable call. It's going to be a charging foul against Dylan Shea. Wow. Trying to make some moves underneath. Yeah. And there was a lot of movement down low by the Mustangs. That's a questionable call, but ball goes back to Laurel Highlands. Cook going to control it after the Gallagher inbound. Gallagher to Cook. Cook to Gallagher. Full court pressure by the Colonials. Tim Smith's going to ah. get the ball and have a wide open lane to the basket. He's going to hit it. Yeah, it was one. Or, it was one or the other. I mean, Long's good in size. Absolutely, if you yeah. And gave it right the to Colonials him, so. got stuck when yeah. Laurel Highlands broke that press, and uh, not too much you can do over that other than keep playing hard. Yep. As Cook brings the ball up for the Mustangs over to Tim Smith. Tim Smith thinks about a three. He stops himself. He's going to dribble over to the other side of the floor, dump it over to Palumbo. Palumbo drives in. He's going to put a shot up. Shot missed. Long rebound. Ah. Long back up, and he's going to make it. Andy is fouled. And that momentum going right back over to the other side of the gym as Laurel Highlands has regained now a 10-point lead, 49-39, with 2.43 left in the third quarter. Long at the line for the Mustangs has the ability to make it an 11-point lead. Yeah, coming coming right off of the injury, coming in. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, th I think that might have been his first of the, of the quarter, actually. So yeah, trying to get I'm some momentum. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but he put it up strong. That leg does not seem to be bothering him yeah. much at all. 
strong play. There's been a lot of strong play from both sides, but oh, Long yeah. is definitely not afraid to use his body, nah. which is a fantastic trait to have, especially when you're going to be a big man underneath. Yeah. As we have a stoppage of play. When we come back, Long is going to put up his potential and one free throw. Jay Fleener trying to get his men fired back up, get that momentum back that they just had. Had the lead down to five points, or six points, six points. Coach Hogger for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs is trying to feed off of this momentum and get to the finish line here and get another W on the season. We're going to have both player, players from both sides coming back onto the floor here. Long yeah. taking his spot at the free throw line. Long's going to see if he can make us a three-point play. Ball is up, but shot is good. Long converts on the three-point play, bumps the Laurel Highlands lead back up to 11, 50 to 39 with 2.38 to play in the third quarter. Albert Gallatin has the ball. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a tough pass. That's going to be a tough pass intended for Llewellyn. No, that's going to be a Laurel oh, Highlands man, turnover. Close. Rodney Gallagher is going to trip, and Nate English is going yeah. to get called for the foul on the other man, side nice. of the floor. These referees have gotten to the point where they're going to call a little bit of everything, it looks like, just to keep everything fair. It was a foul on the floor, and Laurel Highlands is not in the bonus, so Rodney yeah. Gallagher is going to take the ball from underneath the basket, inbound it to Tim Smith. Tim Smith is going to square up for a three-pointer, missed it, and that's going to be a clean rebound for English. English coming back down the floor for the Colonials. English throws a little moves, trying to work down the lane, dumps it to Dylan Shea. He has some moves of his own. He dumps it back well, to backward. Mason Lehew. Lehew over to English. English to Lehew. He's deciding what he wants to do. He's going to pass it back to English. English dumps it to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea trying to use his body to get down low. Ball's poked out. Dylan Shea regains. He's able to dump it over to English. Uh, English to Lehew. Lehew puts up a three uh, and just misses it. Dylan Shea offensive whoa, rebound. Dylan Shea up and good on the foul. Dylan Shea headed to the line to try to convert on a three-point play. Man, Dylan Shea, no matter what, it, you know, he, he's obviously not the tallest guy on the court. Long has him outnumbered by maybe two, two three inches. Yeah, Long would have him outnumbered by about three inches if the paper is according uh, yeah. to plan as Dylan Shea put, has the and one shot fall for him. Laurel Highlands takes the ball back up the floor. Eight point deficit. Laurel Highlands, Tim Smith lays the ball up, misses. Effort with the rebound for the Colonials. Effort over to English who brings the ball back down the floor for Albert Gallatin. English looks around, dumps it over to Llewellyn. Llewellyn to Leahy. Leahy's going to put up another three. And oh, very God. close, but he's going to miss it as Long gets way up there over Dylan Shea for the Laurel Highlands rebound. Long dumps it over to Rod Gallagher, who brought it back up to the floor for the Mustangs. Gallagher puts up a Pushing shot, misses back. it. There's a bit of a scrum underneath for the ball. It ends up out of bounds. Last touch by the Mustangs. Coming back to Albert Gallatin. Minute 22 left in the third quarter. 50-42 to 42 Mustang lead. Man, Rodney really tried to get a fast one there. Like, he's just really desperate for points, but he just can't seem he to is, get it. He is definitely forcing a couple shots, and as far as I can keep track in my head, I believe he's just looking at two points after he averages, I think you told me, yeah, 22. About 22, 22 yeah. yeah, for high school ball, that's tough. Two yeah. points, that's going to bring the old average down. Yeah. English is going to control the ball for Albert Gallatin. He's going to be squared up with Palumbo, dumps it over to Llewellyn. Llewellyn back to English. English tries to find room in the lane. He's going to try to dump it over to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea loses the ball to Rodney Gallagher. Rodney Gallagher brings the ball over to the floor for the Mustangs. He's going to spot up, and there is a free throw length jumper yep. for Rodney Gallagher. Pushes the lead back up to 10 for the Mustangs. English has the ball at the top of the key for the Colonials, trying to answer Rodney's shot. Student section has some words for Rodney Gallagher as English jumps it to Llewellyn. Llewellyn back to Sexton. Rodney Gallagher tries to bring himself back up, dumps it over to Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea is blocked by a long, trying to go up for a Colonial basketball, controlled by Laurel Highlands. Tim Smith to Palumbo, Palumbo to Smith, Smith to Gallagher. Yeah, I, I saw Rodney running up court just screaming for that ball, wanting Egg not to toss it to him. He's 
He's he's definitely starting to get more and more desperate now. Yeah, that he, he scored is his. he is absolutely wanting to uh, put on a show here in the last quarter of the game. Yeah. Laurel Highlands is going to maintain possession of the ball. Rodney Gallagher is once again going to be their inbound man. Smith takes the ball, tosses it right back to Gallagher as he comes inbounds. Gallagher running the floor. They're seven, six, five, four, three. He's try it again. He's going to take a spot there of three is. at the buzzer. Wow. And he hits it. Wow. Man, Rodney so Gallagher amazing. did not like what Albert Gallatin student section, the overrated chance. I don't think he took that too yeah. uh, kindly, and I think that that has fired him up. Yeah. If I were the Albert Gallatin student section, I might have waited a little <laughs> bit to start chanting overrated as Gallagher yeah. hits a three to end the quarter. Yeah, Laurel Highlands takes a nice little run. 55-42 to 42 is our score at the end of three, heading into the final quarter of action. It looks like Rodney Gallagher may not be over yet. That would push him up to seven points now for the ball game. Yeah, because after you know he what? had two just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? I was actually going to say, uh, uh, Rodney, like over the time he he didn't really score much. You saw uh, his defensive game really go up. He was, oh yeah, he was really batting yes, a lot of passes. He's getting a lot more aggressive as time's going on yeah. here. Definitely not too little too late as, Albert, or as uh, excuse me, Laurel Highlands controls this ball game by a 13-point lead, 55-42. Yeah. to 42. So not too little too late, but just in time to um, add insult to injury per se, definitely lock up this Mustang victory here at Albert Gallatin this evening. Effort's going to inbound it to English for the Colonials. They're going to control the ball with the first possession of the fourth quarter. He's going to dump it to Llewellyn. Llewellyn's going to fire it back to English. English dumps it over to... Oh, wow. the ball's turned over Another by one. English. Rod Gallagher is all over that ball. Man, and they're going to call it travel. They're going to say that Chapman for the Colonials controlled the ball on the floor as he and Gallagher went after the loose ball. Man, Mr. Palumbo, or Palumbo, sorry. Has, uh, he's, so, he's so quiet when it comes to that. He, he absolutely the ball right is. Out. He's definitely a force to be reckoned with on yeah. the floor as well. He has been all over the place as Rod Gallagher gets away. Rod Gallagher is going to control the ball, try to silence the critics that he has in Albert Gallatin's <laughs> gymnasium. As everybody on the other side that came out to see him uh, cheers him on, he's still going to control oh, yeah. the ball. He looks like he is going to want to attack here at any second. I think he definitely wants to uh, put on a show here in this last quarter as we have a whistle as he tries to drive towards the floor, towards the uh, basket. Yeah, I mean, these last couple drives he started scoring points. He he wants to, he wants no part of screens. He wants to straight No, he ISO, wants the ball and everything. he wants to shoot. Yeah. Going to be an issue with Albert Gallatin on the late whistle there, so Laurel Highlands will continue to maintain possession. Gallagher inbounds it to Smith. Smith dumps it right back to Gallagher as they have been doing the past couple possession. Yep. Gallagher taking his time, seeing what he has on the floor. Long's going to set up a screen up top against English and back off. Gallagher's going to keep the ball. No shot clock in high school basketball, nope. so he can keep it as long as he wants. Gallagher still controls the ball. He's gone from left to right. He's going to drive. Les Long puts up another pick for him. He's going to drive to the left oh, side, man. and he's going to hit another shot for the Mustangs. And he's definitely coming alive after the overrated chance. Yeah, pretty pretty decent contest on some of those quick quick jump shots. But. Oh, yeah, it's not for Albert Gallatin's lack of, de lack of trying on defense. Gallagher is just that good as he's up to about nine yeah. points now as Llewellyn drives down the Lane for the Colonials. He's going to miss his jump shot. It's going to be controlled by Sexton. Sexton over to English. English is going to nail a three on the assist by Sexton. Wow. So just like that, we have 626 left in the ball game. A 57 to 45 Laurel Highland lead. Man, it's just a constant just change. It has been a constant, constant. back and forth. I'll tell you what, Albert Gallatin. They, they struggled a little bit in the beginning there. They went down right off of the bat. It was about uh, sides. Ever, you know, they're scoring baskets. They're getting good luck. Coming to these games by myself, like, I'll notice, you know, Albert Gallatin, they, they get a slow start in the beginning. Yes, that's but definitely what had happened this evening. Yeah, but it's just as soon as the second starts, it, 
they just start just getting the, an uproaring, an uprising, and they, they're able to keep up with the with the opposing game. Definitely looks like what's happened this evening. Not yeah. a great trait to have, but no. sometimes able to overcome yeah. whenever you have a high-power yes. offense like Laurel Highlands. You are playing with fire a little bit. Yeah. As the Mustangs are going to be fouled inbounding the ball, they're going to try that again. Albert Gallatin bringing some full-court pressure once again. Got a little too aggressive on that last possession. That last defensive possession, I should say. Waiting to see what happens here as everybody's going to get set up. Mustangs fire the wow. ball all the way down the floor. Break the Albert Alton pressure. Cook lays oh. up. Oh, and he misses the full court wow. pass. He misses the full court assist. That was an wow. excellent way to break the pressure. That was a spot-on pass, just yeah. a little too errant by Cook. Yeah, Long had the rebound, but they were able to Yeah, Long had the out. rebound. It was poked out of his hands by a Colonial. So Rodney Gallagher inbounds for Laurel Highlands. Gallagher over to Cook. Cook over to, Cook over to Palumbo. Palumbo over to Tim Smith. Tim Smith dumps it over to Cook. Cook dumps it over to Gallagher. Gallagher's going to take a spot-up jumper right inside the three-point arc. He's going to miss that shot. And the foul, I believe, is going to be called. I'm watching the referee here. Looks like Dylan Shea is going to yeah. foul Cook. Yeah, absolutely. We saw when they were going hands. up for that rebound. Yeah. So the Mustangs still not in the bonus. Gallagher will inbound. Inbounds it to Palumbo. Palumbo over to Cook. Cook to Palumbo. Palumbo to Smith. Smith to uh, Gallagher is going to drive, right. and he is going to. Get it again. Draw that foul. Gallagher headed to the line. After a little bit of tough defense by the Colonials. Gallagher at the free throw line, standing alone, getting everybody squared away on the two lanes. Gallagher's going to put his first shot up for the Mustangs free throw line. He's going to hit that. I would assume he's pretty automatic. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now that he is finally starting to score a lot. Absolutely. There's yeah, he's pretty automatic as the second shot for Gallagher from the free throw line is up and in. Albert Gallatin's going to bring the ball back down the floor. Effort controls the ball on the right side. He's going to pass it over. He's going to make it all the way over to Sexton. He's going to try uh, to pass it to Effort on about the free throw line. Effort's going to turn it over along with the steal over to Cook. Cook brings it up the floor for the oh. Islands. Wow. Stolen by the Colonials. Saved by Sexton. Wow, that was close. Tipped it that up. That was very close. Off of his shoe. That was very close. Wow. When it's so all said foul. and done, Hunter Sexton is going to be at the line for the Colonials after that little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, debauchery, I guess we can say, from both ends of the floor. Yeah. Sexton has one in the bonus, and he does make the first one, so he will be looking at a second shot here in just a second. Makes it a 59-46 score. Laurel Highlands in the lead. Sexton puts the second up and misses that one. Offensive rebound controlled by Dylan Shea. Dylan Shea's going to be fouled going back up, so we're going to have another Colonial at the line trying to stop the clock a little bit. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, Dylan Shea is obviously isn't the tallest guy on the court, but he'll still fight for his rebounds. He is absolutely fighting for the rebounds. It has been all hard from Dylan Shea. Yeah. He's been looking tough this whole game. As he puts up a first free throw, he's going to make that one. Definitely, is, when his number has been called, he has been looking good. It's just uh, been a little tough to keep up with the Mustangs this yeah. evening as Dylan Shea's second shot up is up, and he misses that shot rebound by Long of the Mustangs. Dumps it over to Cook. Cook over to Gallagher. Gallagher to Smith as the Colonials try to force the full court pressure. Smith Brother turns Shea. it over. Dylan Shea running by himself until he's stopped by Gallagher towards the basket, but he does maintain possession. Dumps it to Llewellyn. <laughs> Llewellyn wow. with a three for the Colonials after it rattles around the rim just a little bit. Man, he, he was kind of quiet throughout the quarter. He was quiet throughout the quarter. He is coming alive a little bit again, just like he did towards the end of the second. Yeah. Llewellyn puts up another three, cuts the deficit to nine points. As Coach Hogger for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs has called a timeout. We have a 59-50 lead for the Mustangs with five minutes left in the th fourth quarter of play. Excuse me. Laurel Highlands still has control, but the Colonials do not want to go out without a fight. 
We'll see if they can maintain as the Mustangs come back out onto the floor. Shea Fleener's going to disperse the Albert Gallatin huddle. They will be coming back out onto the floor as well. We'll see if they're, what at the end looks like in this ball game. It's going to be Mustang possession. Albert Gallatin has had pretty decent success with that full court press, so they're going to stick with it. Rodney Gallagher controls the ball deep in his own territory, passes it over to Smith, gets it over half court. Smith waits for reinforcements back to Gallagher. Gallagher dumps it back to Smith on the left side. Gallagher's going to drive, dump it over to Long. Wow. And that, was, that was one heck of a shot by Long. Did not have time to possess the ball, but had time to put it up and score. Yeah. That was a quick one, man. That was an excellent thought process and excellent execution by Long. Yeah. Albert Gallatin brings the ball back down the floor and is fouled. Both teams now in the bonus, so we will be looking at free throws as Hunter Sexton regains the line for the Colonials. First shot up and good. He's honestly kind of starting to take um, – uh, what's called Mr. Effort's place at the foul line now because yeah, Effort, Effort yes. was going to the line a good bit, but now it's Sexton. Any bit helps as Albert Calton trims the lead back down to 10. Back down to 9 as Sexton hits the second of his two shots. Rodney Gallagher controls the ball down low, passes it all the way to Long. Oh, and another Long one. is going to take another hard foul as the Mustangs try to break that press. Looks like he might have irritated that injury previously. He gets yeah. back up. He is hobbling a little bit. Yeah, appears they, to be okay. He's going to stay in the game to shoot his free throws, it looks like. Yeah, they, they tried to get that, that fast one off again like they did before with Cook. That seems to be about the only time they can cleanly break that full court press yeah. from the Colonials. Colonials have pretty decent success with the full court press as Long has one and the bonus misses his first shot, so Albert Gallatin's going to come back down the floor. Harrison's going to look at what he has for the Colonials, going to dump it over to Effort. Effort has Shea for a brief second, tosses oh, it, it down, back. almost stolen by Cook, but steals it back for himself. Got a foul. And he draws a foul off of Rodney Gallagher, who is pretty awestruck at what has transpired. But so uh, now we have Effort taking that free throw line back for the Colonials. Take a moment here to get both lanes set up. Shea Fleener giving instructions to the Colonials. First shot up by effort. Shot is up. Shot is off the iron. Going to get a second shot now. Regardless, make or miss. We are in the double against that Colonial full court pressure. They have Cook pinned down and low in the corner. Cook. An oh, interesting man. try, an interesting kind of diversion turns the ball over, stolen by Shea. Shea lays it up and he misses. Ball controlled by Long. Long tosses it to Palumbo. Palumbo back to Long. Long back to Gallagher. Starting to, uh, they were yep. trying to double team him a little bit. Oh, well, he forced the pass. Gallagher rolls over to the right side, tries to force a pass to Long, but Long is nowhere to be found in that scenario. Long took off right as. Gallagher was letting go of the ball, so it is another Mustang turnover, and that has been the biggest issue, I think, for Laurel Highlands coming down the stretch here has been ball security. As yep. Efford controls the ball for the Colonials, trying to drive on the right side, takes a stutter step, oh. puts up a layup, and he misses. Dylan Shea controls the offensive rebound. Dylan Shea fakes, and Dylan Shea hits another shot as Albert Gallatin cuts the lead back down to six. This full court pressure is working for Albert Gallatin. Mustangs control the ball. Cook has it in Laurel Highlands territory. Over to Timmy Smith. Over to Gallagher. Gallagher puts up a shot. He misses. Cook controls the offensive rebound. Cook puts up a shot. Oh. He misses. Tim Smith controls the offensive rebound for Mustangs. He puts up a shot. He misses. Dylan Shea with the defensive rebound for Alec Gallatin. Llewellyn controls the ball. Passes it over to Effort down low. Effort puts up the shot. Oh! oh and an incredibly late, late whistle. Wow. An incredibly, incredibly late whistle against the Colonials after... The shot is made. I'm telling that you That is one of the latest shots I have ever seen, or yeah. latest whistles I have ever yeah. seen. And Shea Fleener is furious and has every reason to be. That was an incredibly late whistle. Yeah, and I'm telling you what, that really could have turned the wheel for him because as you saw, LH, or sorry, World Highlands missed all of the shots. Got yeah, right it, back was, and it was a rough turn of events for Laurel Highlands, and now wow. uh, 
Now we have a timeout by the Mustangs. Try to get everybody uh, focused back up after yeah. the call on both sides, I'm sure. Wow, I just cannot believe how late that call was. It, yeah. It was, Shea was driving. Albert Callaton back on the floor. Mustangs a little late to the show here. Coming back out, Rodney Gallagher's going to go down low and inbound it for the Mustangs as they take control over the Dylan Shea foul. Full court pressure once again for the Colonials. It has been working. Gallagher's going to dump it over to Cook. Cook back to Gallagher. Gallagher's going to show off his speed. He cuts all the way up the floor down the lane. Dylan Shea is going to line up for a charge. Doesn't get it. Gallagher shot up and good. Harrison brings the ball back down the floor for Albert Calton. Passes it to Sexton. Sexton to Harrison. And he's going to hit a nice layup. <laughs> Colonials taking a second to get set. Gallagher taking advantage. He drives the ball up the lane. Long. Passes over to the ball, but now there's a now Dylan Shea has gotten a successful charge. It's going to be a turnover once again for the Mustangs, and Albert Calton is going to bring the ball back down the floor. 2.46 to play, 63-57, Laurel Highlands lead. Harrison tosses the ball over to Efford. Efford's going to look around. Efford dri oh. tries to drive and turns the ball over along with the nice steal. Ball ends up in Gallagher's hands. He is taking his time. He wants to secure this Laurel Highlands victory. They want to take as much time off the clock as they can. Albert Gallatin oh. holding that press under control, and we have a whistle. Nothing yet. I got no signal yet. Looks like Laurel Highlands is going to maintain yeah. the ball. Maybe out of – the only thing I can think of is uh, I think Sexton for the Colonials made a play on the ball there. Maybe his foot was out of bounds or something. Uh, okay. But nonetheless, Laurel Highlands takes back control of the game. Cook has the ball at the top of the key for the Mustangs. He sees a hole in the lane. He's going to take the shot. And he's going to be fouled going up for the layup. Cook headed to the line for the Mustangs. 63-57 with 2.14 to play as Laurel Highland sees if they can kick two more points up on the lead. Yeah, Albert Gallatin definitely trying to get away with those charging, uh, those charging calls now. It's, it was going a little 50-50 yeah. yeah, there. They, they got a little bit of momentum with it, but you got to be careful because... Because if they score, then... Charges, I'll tell you... They can be your best friend and they can be your worst enemy at exactly. the same time as Cook yep. puts his first free throw up and nails it for the Mustangs. Cook looking at his second shot. It is up. It is good. good. Sexton going to hurry up and inbound the ball for Albert Gallatin. Harrison bringing the ball down the floor. Harrison dumps it over to Sexton, Sexton over to Llewellyn. Llewellyn had the hot hand earlier, maybe able to get the ball in his hands back to Harrison. Harrison to Dylan Shea, he's going to control underneath. Oh, he got it. And that is going to be a foul on Long. Dylan Shea now headed to the Colonial free throw line. Yeah, there, there's definitely been a couple situations where uh, Effort and Shea really tried to get the ball to each other just in the paint. And some of his passes were tipped. So, like you said about Llewellyn and maybe uh, maybe Sexton trying to get the ball in their hand. If Effort drops in, they're trying to get Shea's man to double-team him, yeah. vice versa, try to pass to the open man. Yep. Sometimes it's working as Dylan Shea misses his second free throw. It's rebounded by Long. Colonial's going to stick with the full-court pressure, which has been broken by Laurel Highlands. Palumbo ends up passing it to Smith. Smith over to Gallagher. Gallagher's going to drive on the right side. He's going to retreat after he got closed up. Oh, oh Ronnie Gallagher turns over the ball. Oh, oh. Ronnie Gallagher turns over the ball. Llewellyn takes control, and then Gallagher comes up, tries to pick his pocket from behind. However, he was going to foul Llewellyn. Llewellyn at the free throw line for the Colonials. Minute 40 left to go in this ballgame. 65-57 Mustang lead. First shot up and good. Howard Gallatin trims the lead to 65-58. Second shot up, and that's good too. Howard Gallatin trims the lead to 65-59. Minute 40 to play. Laurel Highlands inbounds the ball. Cook to Palumbo. Palumbo to Smith. They're trying to break that full court pressure. Palumbo gets the ball back, launches it up to Rodney Gallagher. He does have Long down low, puts up a jumper. He oh. missed it off the front of the rim, but Long has the oh. rebound, and Lost it is it. taken away by Sexton. 
Our Calton back down the floor. I have to watch where they're at here. Dylan Shea lays the ball up. He misses. Oh. Defensive rebound, Cook. Cook over to Smith. Smith is bringing the ball down the floor over to Gallagher. Gallagher has control of the Laurel Highlands ball. Lost They're double again. teaming oh. him once again, and that time Gallagher is going to be fouled. Gallagher is just going to try to run the clock out, and Albert Gallatin is going to try to prevent that. Yeah, really tried to box him in that time. Llewellyn, Sexton, and I think Harrison, number 20, all tried to box yeah, him in. Yeah, right I mean, that was, that was about a triple team at that yeah. point. That did warrant the... Uh, the ref to blow the whistle is out as uh, Rodney Gallagher is going to take his first free throw for Laurel Highlands. He's going to nail it. 66 59, Laurel Highlands. Rodney Gallagher getting ready to put up another shot. Shots up, and it is good. 67 59, Laurel Highlands. Clock winding, a minute 11 to play. Harrison brings the ball down the floor for Albert Gallatin. Over to Sexton. Sexton to Effort. Effort gets locked up by Palumbo and Smith. He's able to get it back to Sexton. Sexton gets it down low to Dylan Shea. Yes, Shea wanted that one. Dylan Shea up and in. Shea Fleener calls a timeout. Wow, Albert Gallatin converts on the open shot by Shea. It's 67-61 with 58 seconds to go. Shea Fleener trying to uh, control the clock a little bit here, as is Laurel Highlands. We'll see who can uh, reach the finish line here. Well, I'll tell you what, Jared, with, with the slow start from the Colonials, it seemed like it was going to be a runaway. Yeah. Laurel Highlands has done a heck of a job controlling this game throughout, but uh, it's been a heck of a game to watch from both sides. Both sides, like we said, they've been having a lot of scoring yeah. opportunities, a lot of rebound opportunities, a lot of, a lot of everything. It's been a clean game up until not the fourth quarter, but that does happen. Fatigue sets in. You know, you get, you get a lot more fouls at that point in the game. Yeah. But uh, – this has been one heck of an execution from both sides. I'd say Rodney Gallagher's probably up to around, oh, I'd say 12 or 15 points at yeah. this point in the game, most of which occurring in the fourth quarter here, which really helped elevate Laurel Highlands. Yeah, and Rod Rodney right there got fouled. Those, uh, even those shots, those, those shots count huge. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, because, I, I mean, if he if he didn't make them, you know, they, they don't want to be up by two possessions. Now they're up by MS3, so. Laurel well, Highlands is going to inbound the ball. Gallagher to Smith. Smith weaves around a couple Colonial defenders. Back over to Gallagher. Gallagher gets it up past half court. 49 seconds in winding. Gallagher locked up. Passes it over to Smith. Smith we'll over to, to Cook. Cook over to Long. And Long wow. is going to throw it down for the Mustangs. Wow. One heck of a statement there as Albert Gallatin brings it down the floor. Harrison Smith jacks up a three. Wow. He is going to miss. Rodney Gallagher controls for the Mustangs. Gallagher just winding that clock down, 24 seconds and counting. After that Har Harrison three, I would have to say that missing that shot could be the last opportunity for Albert Gallatin, Harrison and I think foul. it is going to be as Llewellyn is going to foul Gallagher with 14 seconds to go. Man, what a staple right there. What a, a way to end the Man. game for the Mustangs. Just an absolute monster dunk from Long. Wow. And, you know, after after that little injury he had or whatever, he came back. And in the third, he had maybe one or two. Uh, one or two makes. And, but, I he mean. He has come alive just, in the fourth. Yeah, yeah, he picked all that out and just shut everybody up. That's Absolutely. Crazy. Absolutely. That last dunk and last miss from uh, – from Llewellyn as fans start to file out. Rodney Gallagher makes one of two. Sexton puts up a three for the Colonials. He misses. Gallagher controls the rebound, and that is going to be that. He lets the clock run out. Albert, Albert Gallatin fans a little disappointed. Laurel Highlands fans pretty fired up as the teams shake hands over on the sideline. That is going to be it. Laurel Highlands is going to come out victorious. They really controlled the game from the get-go. Great job by Albert Gallatin, though, to kind of maintain and try to fight back. But sometimes it doesn't matter how good you play if they're just a little bit better. But uh, final yeah. score from the Albert Gallatin High School Gymnasium is going to be Laurel Highlands Mustangs, 70 points. Albert Gallatin Colonials, 61. I want to thank you for listening. This is Rob Flokovich and Jared Tolbert signing off.